Good morning and welcome to St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in the Green Lake area of Seattle. If you are new to St. Andrew's or would like to see all the different happenings going on within our community, feel free to head over to our website at standrewsseattle.org. All one word, spell it out. That is standrewsseattle.org. Org. I am so happy that you are joining me this morning for our daily morning prayer for the first week of Advent. Today is Wednesday, December 2nd, 2020, and our reading today will come from the Book of Common Prayer, page 75. Also, Psalms 119, 1 through 24, you can find this in the Book of Common Prayer on page 763 to 765. Luke 20, 19 through 26, and also Isaiah 2, 1 through 11. Let's take a moment, take a couple deep breaths. It's always good to center yourself, your mind, body, and soul. As we prepare, Give thanks to our Lord and Father. Let us begin. Watch, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. Lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. Page 78. Let the words of my mouth and the med meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through you our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. The Invitorium Pelster. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it is in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. Page 82. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this. The Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Our psalms appointed today is Psalm 119, 1 through 24, and it can be found on page 763. <laughs> Happy are those who is blameless, who walks in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his degrees 
and seek him with all their hearts. Whoever do any wrong, but always walk in his ways. You lay down your commandments, that we should fully keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so direct, that I might keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to shame when I regard all your commandments. I would thank you with an unfringed heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By keeping to his words. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not stray from your commandments. I treasure your promise in my life, my heart, that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Instruct me in all your statutes. With my lips will I recite all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken great, greater delight in the ways of your degrees than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and give attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Deal, deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes that I may see the wonders of your law. I am a stranger here on earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul is consumed at all times with longing for your judgment. You have rebuked the insolent. Cursed are they who stray from your commandments. Turn from the shame and rebuke. For I have kept your degrees, <clears throat> even through, even though rulers sit and plot against me, I will meditate on your statutes. For your degrees are my delight, and they are my counselors. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be, forever. Amen. The first reading today is from Isaiah 2, 1 through 11. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, in the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, he shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. For you have forsaken the ways of your people, O house of Jacob. Indeed, they are full of diviners from the east and the soothsayers from the Palestinians, Palestine. And they clap hands with foreigners. Their land is filled with silver and gold, and there is no end to their treasures. Their land is filled with horses, and there is no end to their chariots. Their land is filled with idols, and they bow down to the work of their hands, to what their own fingers have made. And so people are humbled, and everyone is brought low. Do not forgive them. Enter into the rock and hide in the dust from the terror of the Lord, 
and from the glory of his majesty. The heighty eyes of people who brought low, and the pride of everyone shall be humbled, and the Lord alone shall be exalted on that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle is on page 90, canticle 14. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all their righteous offsprings, you have made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measures. It surpasses all that our minds can phantom. O oh Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent for their sins and be saved. And now, O oh Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal, sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, Lord, I have sinned. And I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent. And in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy, and I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sings your praise, and yours is the glory to age of ages. Amen. Our second reading is from Luke 20, 19 through 26. When the scribes and the chief priests realized that they had told <clears throat> that he had told his parable against them, they wanted to lay hands on him at that very hour, but they feared the people. So they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be honest in order to trap him by what he said, so as to hand him over to the jurisdiction and authority of the governor. So they asked him, Teacher, you know we know that you are right and what you say and teach, and you show difference to no one, but teach the way of God in accordance with truth. Is it lawful for us to pay taxes to the empire? emperor or not. But he perceived their craftiness and said to them, Show me a denarius. Whose head and whose title does it bear? They said, The emperor's. He said to them, Then give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. And they were not able in the presence of the people to trap him by what he said. And being amazed by his answer, they became silent. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, Canticle is on page 87. The third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land. Deep gloom enshrouds the people, but over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Your gates will always be open, by day or night, they will never be shut. 
They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and the glory will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In our reading of Luke, we find that the scribes and chief priests sent spies to pretend to be honest in order to trap Jesus by what he is preaching. This scenario happened to me last week. The topic was love one another as Jesus said to do. One, love God with all your mind, your body, and soul. And second is like the first, love your neighbor like yourself. So the question became, how do you deal with those who say they do practice this, yet their action speaks otherwise? Well, this caused me to dig deeper into what the Bible says about this topic. Now just out of curiosity, this is what I found. Pre, pre, uh, reference 5.4 Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. Romans 2.1 Therefore you have no excuse, O man, Every one of you who judges, for in passing judgment on one another, you condemned yourself because you, the judge, practiced the very same thing. And we have Peter 4, 4, 12 to 17. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery, tri fiery, fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice insofar as you share Christ's suffering, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer, or as a meddler. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. And this is the very last one. Luke 6, 22-27 Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you, and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For so their fathers did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. And woe to you who are full now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. When the scribes and chief priests realized that he had told this parable against them, they wanted to lay hands on him at that very hour, but they feared the people. So they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be honest in order to trap him by what he said, so as to hand him over to the jurisdiction and authority of the governor. And this list in the Bible goes on and on and on. Well, my point being, this has helped me to forgive what had been said and done 
and I hope you may find comfort and peace if there's a day, hour, or time that these comforting words might be needed. Let us continue our worship on page 96, together as we pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus God, Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. Save us from the time of trial, but and deliver us from evil. For the King, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgiven, nor the hope of the people be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Page 100, with the Colic for Guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We welcome you this time to offer your prayers and intercessions. And if you need a bit longer, just pause. Heavenly Father, I pray that you be with all the higher bishops and priests and your holy churches that they may have the wisdom to guide us through this pandemic may you be with all the nurses doctors and all the first liners give them the strength to carry on Father, I know you're always there. You never leave us. But I uh, humbly ask that you send comfort to those who have lost a loved one. 
those who are suffering in any way, mind, body, or soul. And that we, your people, here on earth, may finally find peace with each other. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us say our general thanksgiving together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, you, your unworthy servant, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves for your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. I thank you for sharing your morning prayers with me. And I hope that everyone has a good and peaceful day. Take good care. And again, we invite you to check out our website at standrewsseattle.org. Spell it out. That's all one word. St. Andrews, Seattle, dot O-R-G. Go in peace. Bye.